So if you have a car like this car where you're kind of limited overall to how much power you can make, you kind of find yourself looking between thousands of dollars worth of engine upgrades so you can make that extra power or just being complacent with what you have. But of course there's another way you can go faster without adding powers. Now how you do that? Weight reduction of course. Duh. Even with weight reduction, you can find yourself going down a very slippery slope. You know, it all starts with the easy things, and then before you know it, you have a fully gutted interior, and you've done removed everything that makes the car drivable and livable, just to go a little bit faster. For me, if it's a daily, if it's a street car, you don't want to do that. You don't want to make the car unlivable and unenjoyable to drive, because then what's the point? So then I thought to myself, in the case of a Mustang here, what can you remove? How much can you actually remove without sacrificing the livability, the drivability, and overall comfort of the vehicle and still remove enough weight to gain a significant amount of performance? So that's what I'm gonna be doing in today's video. Let's have some fun on Cars Create. So first things first, it is Florida, it is sunny, and it is hotter than the hinges of Hades out here. I tell you what, and as you very well may have guessed, I'm going to be doing my 40 to 80 runs. Right now, not one thing is taken off the car. I have a full tank of gas. I have not taken a crap today. This is worst case scenario, full weight. So let's go ahead, get in the car, get it started, and get this test underway. Now, one thing I wanna mention right away is uh, part of my weight reduction is the difference between a full tank of gas and a quarter tank of gas because gas is heavy these cars take over 15 gallons of gas when full you know there's a lot of weight there and it can affect the car's performance significantly now i've done weighed this car in the past and uh with a full tank of gas and me in it it weighs a little over 3800 pounds which isn't too bad because that's generally what a dry weight gt weighs anyway so like i am the difference of the coyote versus the ecoboost in terms of weight now with that said uh you know like the new intercooler i put on is a bit heavier it's probably added about 20 extra pounds having those colder air temps is a little bit better of a trade-off uh, for that little extra weight okie dokie about to get our base run in here see what it does remember 40 to 80 starting in third gear at about 40 mile per hour all right let's hit it So after doing a run, our base time run is 5.19 seconds. Now let's go ahead and start removing weight from the car. Let's see if we can get that number to go a little bit lower. So we're gonna start with the engine bay first and there's a couple things here we can remove. So first things first, the good old engine cover. Just can go ahead and come off. This does weigh a few pounds, like it, it is kind of heavy. We're gonna go ahead and remove this insulation from the hood, because I can tell this probably weighs a couple pounds itself, and it's not really necessary. That's got some noticeable weight to it as well. I mentioned while it's off, I can go ahead and clean this dang thing. If your car does not have a strut tower brace, then that's weight savings you already have. But this is one of those pieces where its purpose is too important to have to remove it for a couple pounds worth of weight savings. Alternatively, they make some lighter weight versions, but I you know, doubt you're only gonna be shaving a pound or two on like a couple hundred dollar aluminum strut tower brace. So for the most part, that's really all you can remove up here to save a couple pounds. Now we're going to direct our attention to the trunk area. Yeah, yes, there is definitely weight that can be saved back here. Mainly this, this is a couple pounds. Noticeable, couple pounds. Also, the inflatable tire kit here, not as useful as a spare tire, this is what you get nowadays, but most of the time people have roadside assistance anyway, so not to say I recommend not having this in your vehicle, but this is a, this is a good uh, six pounds or so that comes right out. Which leaves us to go inside the cabin of the vehicle. This is where some of the biggest weight savings can be had 
depending on how far you're willing to go. The Mustang is a two plus two car, means two seats and two half seats. <laughs> I mean, look, I've had people back here before and uh, they were very tiny people and they still were not very happy about it. And anyone sitting behind me either has to have no legs or I have to be put in a very uncomfortable driving position so they can be somewhat comfortable, but mostly uncomfortable. So needless to say, these two plus two cars, except maybe the Challenger has very pointless back seats. Why even have them? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So these come out pretty easily. So my, this bottom cushion just comes out. You just push in on it. There, it lifts up like that. Most seat cushions have been the same way for God knows how many years. Pretty much every car I've had all going back only into the early 90s were like this. Just something they never decided to change. Which is good because it makes very easy removal of the rear seat cushion. Now the weight savings isn't so much with the bottom cushion as it is with these. So for my car at least on these uh, brackets for the cushion here there are two 15 millimeter bolts. Nuts, excuse me, they're nuts. I'm nuts, we're all nuts. All right, and then there's one more right here in the center. The easiest way to get that is just to drop the seats down and then you can get to it right there. Okay, this one's actually a bolt, go figure. So just like I have, two nuts and a bolt. <laughs> All right, so these come out in two separate pieces. Er, come on, or I thought they did. They do, just have to pull a bit. All right, so that takes care of that. Now you can definitely take this a step further um, and remove the seat belts and the brackets the seat belts go on. Um, I'm sure all of this and the tensioners for the rear belts were probably a good five or six pounds. And then you have these brackets back here that are for the bottom cushion to latch onto. All of this, I'm sure, is a couple extra pounds. I'm not removing this right now because I do have intentions to put my seats back in after the video. But eventually, I do plan on permanently removing the rear seats and then putting a rear seat delete kit so at least it covers up all this nasty and it looks nice. And when I do that, all of this extra stuff is coming out. Pretty, pretty easy. Easy squeezy, lemon peasy. Now, like I was saying, there's still a little bit more you could remove from the interior, but this point you are affecting the usability of the vehicle. I'm talking about the passenger seat. Now you could technically remove both seats and replace the driver's seat with a lightweight seat, maybe for just track days or something. Uh, but I don't advise doing that because A, you get rid of your comfortable seats, especially if you have leather, that's always nice. You get rid of your safety with modern seats like these that have airbags and such. So, you know, safety in a street car daily is kind of more important than weight savings, but if you did remove it, I, I think these seats are like, what, 60 so some pounds a piece more for the leather. If you've switched out both seats and put a lightweight seat in place of the driver's seat, that's probably easy, easy 100 pounds right there. But like I said, I don't want to affect the usability of my car and I always have a passenger. So the passenger seat stays. All right, so we have a whole assortment of parts here. So let's go ahead and start weighing the smaller things first. Let's go ahead and start weighing this uh, roadside kit here because this feels chunky. Okay, so we got four pounds, 15 ounces. So let's go ahead and write that down, four pounds, 15 ounces. Now let's see how much our engine cover weighs. Once again, this is a noticeable amount of weight. Three pounds, three pounds, two ounces. All right, next in line, let's go ahead and do our trunk cover thing. See how much this weighs. Four pounds, two ounces. And let's see what sound deadening liner for the hood. It's gonna kind of be tricky to weigh, but we'll see. Four pounds, two ounces, wow. I can see a lot of this stuff has very similar weight. Kind of interesting. Now the rear seat cushion. This definitely got some heft to it. We're looking at 10 pounds, 11. We'll just do 11 even for the seat cushion. Now the last two bits are the rear seat cushions. Let's see what this one weighs. Nine pounds, 10 ounces. I didn't realize one of the brackets fell off, so I'll go ahead and 
add that with this one. The bracket on there, where are we at? 10 pounds. Do 10 pounds, eight ounce. I'm cutting in real quick because I totally forgot about this little part. That little thing right there. Three 13 millimeter bolts. And this thing comes right on out. Oh, that's chunky. And as you can see, you can easily get to it with the wheel turned to the right all the way. And this little thing is supposed to help with NVH, is from my understanding, I guess help absorb vibrations. But this thing is heavy. And I don't want vibrations taken away from my Mustang. I like vibrations in my Mustang. How else am I gonna get turned on? So how heavy is this, you ask? With the bolts that hold it in, and the piece itself, five pounds. 14 ounces, so that I'm gonna round up to six pounds. Taken off within minutes. Now, since this little piece was taken off after I already recorded and edited the other bits of video, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of put the updated numbers on the screen, including this part as well. All right, so after adding all of those numbers up, which I rounded up a little bit, if the ounce was over eight, I rounded up to the next pound. So uh, with that, it gave us a grand total of everything we just weighed of 30 and I'm gonna stop you there real quick. So somewhere along the way, I did not do this calculation right. The weight is not 38 pounds. Instead, the actual weight is 53 pounds. And then that's including the little NVH isolator underneath the car. But 53 pounds is the correct number. You know, this stuff was easy to pull out and easy to put back if it needs to go. Now, one thing I wanna mention is that the front belly pan of the car, you know, the this plastic piece that goes up under here. The part that originally came with the car was actually quite heavy. And when I originally planned to do this video before I had the accident with the car, part of the removal was gonna be removing that piece and substituting it with something lighter. I was even gonna see if I could trace it and make my own out of like a piece of thin aluminum or something that's try to say weight because it was so heavy. It was probably a good 20 pounds or so, it was crazy. But I have to tell you, since the accident and them replacing that piece with the new revised part, the revised part is much, much lighter. A lot less plastic, a lot less material, therefore a lot less weight. That is something you could definitely keep in mind if you have an older car and you have that pan under there, look and see what the part number is because the ones that come on newer cars are a lot lighter. At least that was in my case. But for now, I'm going to see the most weight savings in fuel. So like I said earlier in the video, the first run I did was with a full tank. Now a quick Google search would say that a gallon of gas is about six pounds. So gas is very, very heavy. And like I said, at a 15 gallon tank, when that tank is full, we can do the math together. 15 times six is 90 pounds. Yikes, 90 pounds is a lot of weight. That is almost one tenth worth of weight right there. It's technically a 15 and a half gallon tank. Divide that by our four quarter, four gallons per quarter of the gas gauge. I'm gonna round up the four. And we see that a full tank at 15 and a half gallons is 93 pounds. We subtract the 93 from our 24, that the difference is 69 pounds. <laughs> Oh, bad. So 69 pounds is a lot of weight. Then we take our 69 pounds, then we add our weight savings of removing parts of 38 pounds, and we get a grand total of 107 pounds that is easily removed from the vehicle. And did I mention absolutely free? And the old school rule of thumb is every 100 pounds is about equal to one tenth faster acceleration. Let's go ahead and see if that actually adds up. All right, moment of truth has come. So we'll go ahead and do our same 40 to 80 run. See if we got any big, big difference here. All right, let's hit it. <laughs> oh my God, without all the stuff back there, you, you can just hear the exhaust, it screams. But I tell you what, it feels like the car has got like an extra 20 horsepower or something like that. It definitely moves a lot more swiftly than it did. But there's only one way to really find out. Let's go ahead and check the drag it. Let's see if we actually did get that tenth of a difference from the weight reduction. All right, so now that I'm back home, let's go ahead and take a look at the drag Let's see what happened. Oh my goodness, look at that. 4.91. That is a lot better than one tenth. 
you know, that is almost three tenths of a difference. And if that's not crazy enough, look at the distance travel between both runs. The first run was 482 feet and then the second run was 453. That's almost 30 feet difference. That is two and a half car lengths difference. No power added, same stretch of road, same everything. The car's running the same, no difference. The only difference is quarter tank of fuel and all those extra parts out of the car for that extra 120 some pounds of weight reduction. And remember, there's more that could be had. So almost three tenths of a difference from 20 minutes worth of removing things on a quarter tank of gas is huge. I was not expecting that much of a difference, but there it is. The proof is in the pudding, man. That's some good pudding. In the case where you're maxed out on power and you can't make any more power reliably, man, that's easy, easy performance in no time. So that is really, really cool. And I'm happy that was the results we got in this video. But let me know what you think in the comments. Put your uh, thoughts in the comments below. But I think that's going to wrap it up here for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for next Cars Created video.